In this video, we're going to look at training scars. What are they, and how can we avoid them by layering our training? It's a concept based on Ian Abernathy's training matrix. Over the next few minutes, I'll walk you through a drill and how we can train in different ways to eliminate training scars. of several layers in this drill. Uh, so again, a, a, a layer drill is one where we have different types of doing the same thing. The first layer is uh, it's a two-person drill, and we don't have any pads to strike, um, but I have a live person, so the, the advantage here is I have a real head to find, a real target to go to, uh, I have a real limb to clear, a real body to throw, and so on. The weakness, of course, is I can't actually hit him. So the drill starts like this. Um, it, it's designed that uh, the uki has to do his or her job. So the uki has to make sure that they are, are kind of parrying and covering stuff in my attempts to attack and choke and so on to force me to find another way to stay in control of the altercation. So, just a slow speed here. First, I'm going to do a, a kazamazuki or a jab, one. So the uki Alex here is going to slip to the outside and just check that with his rear hand. Next, my, my, I have a, a, a right hook coming. So he's going to cover that. So it's important that he does this. I, I use that tactile sensation, which is easier to process, faster to process than visual information from to, to your brain. So right away, boom, I, 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 my arm hits his arm. Right away, I'm going to peel that away and find the head. So you see this in lots of katas. It's in teki, hien godan, kankodai, and so on. So the hikate is peeling that arm out of the way. At the same time, I find the head. And like in those katas, we're just going to put our elbow uh, in, into our hand. So I know where my hand is in three-dimensional space. I just put my elbow there. Okay? Now, if it's a glancing blow or something that may not finish. If it's working, though, no, keep doing it. I'm going to throw an elbow. Here's where the uki has an important job here. Cover up. Okay? So I know now it's not working anymore. i got to try something different. I didn't get in. Right? So I'm going to drop my hips back, get heavy. Right? I'm going to get him in a tie clinch and I'm going to do hien yon bed. I find the head pull it down into my knee. For crap, for safety, I'm going to go to the stomach. All right, so head in the neck, throw some knees. All right, he's going to try to cover up. That's not working. So from here, I'm going to go to a guillotine choke. This comes from Basadai. So again, get heavy. I want to get on top here. Uh, when you're practicing slowly, you can use a bit of force here. Get heavy on the head like this. You can't do that speed because you're going to hurt your partner. So I want my armpit on top of the back of his neck like this. Okay, shoot that down. That also looks like uh, Najushiho, one, two, where this is pulling the head down, this shoots down like so. So now we're doing Basadai, where this comes around the neck, and the other hand, the free hand, is lifting this fist up, and I'm going for that guillotine, and I just posture up, get tall, and go for a tap. Now, the uki, he doesn't want to get choked, so he's going to take his, his right hand, He's going to, as I'm trying to choke, he's going to mimic grabbing the testicles. We've done this before in other videos. Pinch the inside of the thigh really hard to get a reaction of me. So I'm going for the choke. He's got a hole that hurts like heck. So I'm going to bail on the choke. I'm going to take my, this hand, swat that away, and feed it into this hand. When our arms cross, that's a jujuke, which is found in, in many couples. Same time, shoot the back leg back and his back. Here, okay? So this feeds this to my right hand. Use a monkey grip like so. Don't try to grab with the thumb. That's too weak. And I want his arm going across his neck like that. Now, I want this tight. And I can use my other hand in here. He has the wrong leg for it. If that's the case, I'm just gonna take a, a pull him like that, get him to make a step. Now this next movement kind of looks like hand sundown. Right, so from here, I want the weight off this foot. I'm going to lean this way. And I want his spine rotating like that so all the weight goes here. When that happens, see how I lean like this to get the weight out? Let's come back one more time. When I lean to the back foot, weight off there, step through. Don't let the head pop through. Don't lose the arm. I can just give a knee right here and smash, or I can 
which punch and or fist sometimes strike of your choice. All right, the next layer of this drill is the same thing essentially, but we're going to introduce some pads. So the obvious benefit here is I get to hit something, but uh, this time we, we introduce a new flaw. In this case, the, the pads don't behave the same as a head or a limb. The limb I'm trying to clear is in the wrong place. The head is, in this case is too light because it's only a pad. So essentially we're going to replace one flaw with another one. It looks up like this. So just at uh, slow speed, we start off with our, our uh, one, two. Uh, before we were doing a round haymaker punch, and Alex was covering up here, so I want to mimic uh, hitting his his uh, covering arm to be able to clear it. So for that reason, this is why I'm hitting the, this pad first. This one second. So we're gonna go one, two, and right after the punch, if you recall, we have clearing a limb. This represents his front hand. I clear the limb and find the head. There's the head. So it's now low. Clinch. He stacks the pads. I can't go too hard because of the nature of the pads I'm using. If you have some tied pads that are heavier, I could uh, add a little bit more juice on this. Go our knee strikes. Pull down. Get the guillotine choke. And again, here's a problem. He can't actually pinch my leg to elicit any kind of pain response, so I just have to respond to the pad touching my leg this time. Go for the clinch. Pair that over. Again, wrong leg is forward. I can push or pull. Move around with him. Don't lose the arm. I either hit with this hand, come over here, and now I get to put the nice bit of whale on. The other layer we can practice is what I call contextual key on. So it's it's Keon's you know, fundamentals, if we're practicing our fundamentals, but we're not doing it in a rigid, uh, traditional Keon kind of fashion where we're going one, two, three, four. We're moving as if we really have a, a, a real body, a real head to find, a real arm to clear, a uh, real body to throw. So move freely. So Master Sonokoshi says, do not get shackled by the rituals of kata. Instead, move freely according to the strengths and weaknesses of your opponent. That's all the subtleties that you have to, to, to do when we're practicing those other drills. So now we try to bring those subtleties into our peon, getting heavy on the head, off balance, and that sort of thing. Okay, let's walk through this. Left side try. Kizamaduki, Washaduki. Clear the limb, find the head, and have to get it closer. So your elbow in the head. This is all time. Right. Next, flinch, get heavy. Close the knees. Right. Still keen, get down, get tall, choke. Right, they're grabbing the groin, scroll back, squat that away, feed the arm into your arm, pull it tight, step across. Right, control the arm, hammer to strike. 